This demonstration is going to look at the new reference behaviors available with the latest release of NX here in December 2023, NX 2312. Uh, so we have here a, a target part we're going to use a little bit. We have uh, three different feature templates down here with reference behavior one, two, and three that we're going to look at. Um, we're just going to open one of these here inside uh, the, uh, the template authoring environment so we can see uh, where we set this behavior. So at the top level here of the template in the main dialog, we're going to choose now this reference behavior. And this has changed a little bit from the previous release. We've renamed these uh, to make them a little more explicit about what's going on. All right. And there are three behaviors here that we'll talk about. Um, the first one here is redefining the, the selection intent rule and the constructor method here. So this first one is going to redefine both the, the selection rule and the constructor method in this case is a, is a direction here uh, for this extrusion. Um, this so the first one's going to redefine both. The second one's going to reuse both here. So it's going to use the exact same selection intent rule as when the, the feature template was created and the exact same constructor method as when it was created. Now these two we've had in NX uh, up until now with some different names. <laughs> And uh, we think these are, are better names, more descriptive of what's actually going on here. The third one is new. This one's new in NX2312. And this one's kind of a hybrid of the two above. And we'll see this here in just a second. But this is going to redefine, let you uh, redefine the selection intent rule for the section here in the extrude and reuse the, the constructor method, in this case, the, the uh, direction, the vector. Okay, So the vector will stay consistent. Uh, the, the method for the vector will stay consistent and the section will be able to redefine them. So we'll see these in action here for a second, okay? So this first one is redefine both, right? And in this case, what we see with redefine both is that as we go to do our section, uh, in fact, let me get out of here. Uh, let's go and look at this in context. As we, we do this first one here, we'll see that as we go to select the section for this particular one, we have the selection intent rule selector available, right? We can go choose a new selection intent rule uh, in this case. And uh, as we go to pick our section. So for this one here, for instance, we could go pick uh, in, in, here in this case, say feature curves and pick uh, all of those guys in one shot. And, and we can do that and get those four curves there all together, for instance. Similarly, with the direction of extrusion here, we have all of the constructor methods available for selecting the direction of the extrusion. So this one, again, is uh, the first case here is letting us redefine both the section and the, the rule for the section and the rule for the extrusion. Okay. Uh, the second one here is the one that's going to reuse both explicitly. Okay. So this one here, as we bring it out, we'll see that when this was created, in fact, we can go back and look at this in the first place. Uh, let's open this again and look a little bit at how this was constructed. Um, this one has the, the sketch in here with its triangle, in this case, with three curves and the extrusion. And in the extrusion feature, you'll notice that the single curve rule was selected here and we picked three curves specifically as we created this extrusion in the first place. Now that's not the most robust way to do this, right? Uh, but I did this on purpose to show what happens if we use that single curve and we reuse the rule here, okay? In this case, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say that we use this one, we picked three curves, and so it's gonna look specifically for three curves as we, uh, as we come out of this, right? Um, so as we do that, uh, we will see here that uh, let's close that as we use this reference set uh, reference behavior two. that the dialogue then is going to ask us specifically for three curves, right? We also don't have the selection intent rule selector available up here. So this one again is going to kind of limit us or, or uh, guide us toward using specifically three curves to, to do the extrusion, which we can do. Uh, but of course that doesn't help us close the section if that's our intent, right? Um, so that's uh, the second behavior. The third behavior here is the hybrid of the two. And this one is going to let us reselect the section. You'll notice the section here, we have the infer curves available, or sorry, the, the whole selection intent menu available over here. So we could choose feature curves here, for instance, right? And, uh, and pick that whole, that whole guy in one. The direction here is limited. Uh, we don't have the full definition of the direction available 
right? And that may also be desirable if we're trying to restrict the, the shape, the end shape that comes out somewhat <laughs> based on the direction there, uh, but allow the section to be edited, okay? Now this third behavior is most similar to the way user-defined feature worked historically. And that's the main reason we added it because it was that there were some a significant number of cases where, where users liked this specific hybrid combination uh, of those those ones because that's how their legacy uh, user-defined features would work okay now just one one little thing at the end here number two here right this is the one that had the explicit list of three curves right if you find yourself in this situation uh, a couple ways that you could you can fix this um, if you do want them to specifically use a feature uh, to define the section here, for instance, we could go back to this number two and edit this in a way that would make that possible. So for instance, if we were to come back and edit reference behavior two here and come and say that we want to, um, when, when we're working with this, this, uh, um, Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, it's not a change that we're going to make in, in the template author environment here. We're actually going to edit the original feature. So I'm going to exit template studio here and we can go back to the extrude, right? In the extrude, if you'll remember, we came in here before and we saw that the selection intent rule was set to single curve and had these three curves here, right? What we could do is deselect those and come back and say, instead of single curve, I want to use feature curves for this. And if feature curves is the rule that we save here with this feature, again, one pick then picks all of the curves in the feature, all three of those. Um, and the recipe now will be to look for the feature, right? Um, we can do this now and say, okay, and save this part. And in this case now, we've changed the template, right? We've changed the rule in the template from explicitly picking three curves now to picking the, the feature as the basis for this for this uh, feature template. And so we can now see that new behavior here with, with reference behavior two, uh, that as we bring this up now, it's asking us for the feature, right? Because that's our selection intent rule that we've saved with this part. And this one now we can pick, it's pre-picked the, the hexagon down there for some reason, uh, but we can pick this, right, as one, or again, pick the hexagon down there as one, and it will go and, and find all of those curves, whether it be one or four or six out there, uh, reliably based on the feature collection, right? Because again, we predefined that. Again, this may be desirable, right? To reuse this method, reuse the, the direction, uh, if we wanna maintain this kind of a robust interaction. So the choice is up to you there. <laughs> again, we've done this on purpose so that uh, as you go into the feature template authoring environment, you can choose there based on, again, setting here at the main dialogue level, this reference behavior, and really choose the one of these that makes the most sense for what you're trying to do with your feature template and how you're trying to guide your users, okay? So with those three examples there, I hope you find this useful.